In this video, we'll demonstrate the impression-making procedures for the edentulous maxilla. The border of the tray is marked 2 to 3 mm short of the intended border. Generous relief should be made to the frena and the border should extend posteriorly to the vibrating line and the hamular notch area. Notice how more relief is required for the buccal frenum and the tray borders are slightly overextended labially. So I need to make them shorter by 1 to 2 mm. Use an indelible pencil to mark the buccal and labial frenum and the overextended borders. Trim away overextensions using a chair side straight hand piece and an acrylic burr. And trim the borders just until the line that you've marked previously. Low fusing impression compound or green stick is the material of choice for border molding. The material is heated over direct flame. Once you see that the material has become glossy and has dropped slightly, then it's ready to be loaded on the tray. The material is applied incrementally to the tray borders. Start with border molding the labial frenum. Place the compound on the tray, which is approximately 2 mm short of the full depth of the sulcus or the denture borders. After placement of compound, position it beyond the expected height of the vestibule. Heat it and temper it in hot water, and then place in the mouth. The labial vestibule is molded first. Move the lip in an upward and downward direction to border mold the labial vestibule and the labial frenum. And then ask the patient to seal their lips around the handle of the tray by saying, Ooh, this will activate the orbicularis oris and will record the full depth and the width of the labial vestibule. Inspect the tray borders under good lighting conditions. Notice how the material had lost its gloss, meaning that it had turned dull indicating that it had made contact with the tissues properly. Trim the excess material on the inner borders of the tray and then heat the periphery to border mold the distobacal vestibule on the right hand side. It is important to apply adequate thickness of the compound material on the borders of the tray so that you record the full width and the full depth of the vestibule. Use a small amount of Vaseline on your fingertips to manipulate the impression compound. Push it beyond the borders of the tray, making sure that they extend about two or three millimeters beyond the borders of the tray, and then heat it uh, on the Bunsen burner and then temper it before introducing it again to the patient's mouth. Seat the tray into position. To border mold the buccal frenum, move the lips and cheeks gently in an upward, outward and then downward direction. This movement will border mold the effect of the muscles of the modiolus which is a collection of muscles of facial expression located just at the corners of the mouth. Next, ask the patient to move their mandible to the right and left. This will record the distobacal vestibule of the maxillary denture, in addition to recording the coronoid bulge, in which the coronoid process of the mandible affects the width and the height of the distobacal vestibule. Once the material has cooled down, remove it from the patient's mouth gently and then inspect it under good lighting conditions. Trim the excess material from the inner borders of the tray and notice how the buccal frenum is border molded and that you have created the coronoid bulge.
Now is the time to border mold the left hand side. Heat the periphery of the previous border molding. Apply the material on the borders of the tray. Heat it on the wanted burner and then temper it with warm water before introducing it again to the patient's mouth. Observe how the tray is seated into the patient's mouth. Rotate the tray into position and pull the cheeks and lips away as you're seated. Observe closely as we border mold the buccal frenum in addition to border molding the distal buccal vestibule in which the patient in is instructed to move their jaw to the right and the left side. Inspect the borders of the tray under good lighting conditions and remove any excess material. The final area to border mold is the hammerer notch and the vibrating line area. Apply the material as instructed previously and then introduce it to the patient's mouth. Ask the patient to move their jaw to the right and left sides. In addition to saying ah uh, out loud, this will move the soft palate and will help record the posterior vibrating line. Inspect the tray borders. The notch of the trachomandibular raphi can be noted. The final impression material of choice is zinc oxide eugenol. Apply equal length of the eugenol paste and the zinc oxide paste on a mixing pad. The material is then gathered in the center of the mixing pad and mixed in a figure 8 motion with a metal spatula until a homogeneous pink mixture is achieved. The final impression material is then loaded into the tray. Tray borders should be covered and the material is uniformly distributed within the tray. Apply Vaseline on the patient's lips and cheeks to avoid adherence of the zinc oxide to the skin. Seat the tray into the patient's mouth. Use the labial frenum and the tray handle as a reference. Repeat the border molding movements to record all the details of the denture borders. Prepare for impression removal by inspecting that the material has fully set. If you stab it with your fingernail, it will not leave an indent, so this is how you know that it's fully set. Notice here how it's difficult to break the seal. So ask the patient to seal their lips tightly around the handle and blow forcefully. This will break the seal and then you'll be able to retrieve the tray from the patient's mouth. Once more, inspect the tray under good lighting conditions and make sure that you have recorded all the borders of the tissues. Once done, disinfect the impression and send it to the lab for the fabrication of record blocks.